morning to everyone that's going to be joining us on video later. Good morning to each and everyone here. This morning, our lesson is going to come from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. If you want to go ahead and turn there. And I've entitled this morning's sermon, Ambassadors for Christ. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. You know, being ambassadors for Christ carries more responsibility than we might think. The world functions by the use of people <laughs> being experts in their field, and sometimes that idea trickles into the church, thinking that we have experts in the church to complete the will and purpose of God, leaving, leaving some of us thinking that it's someone else's responsibility to complete the will of God in certain areas and in certain responsibilities. Although that might be true, we have elders, we have preachers, we have teachers, but there's some things, and this is one of the particular things in the Bible that God says is all our responsibility, and that is to fulfill the work of the, uh, it's the ministry of reconciliation and the ministry of the word of reconciliation, and that's what we're going to talk about this morning. First of all, I asked the question to myself in putting this lesson together, well, what's an ambassador and so here's just uh, a few uh, things that are basic, a basic ways in which I put down that uh, it suggests to us what, a rep what a, an ambassador who is a represent re representative of a country sent by that country to develop and maintain relations between his country and the country his, he is set, sent to. Here are four basic requirements for that person to be an ambassador. And then I also have with it the thoughts and concepts that fit the teaching and the ideas of Christianity. First of all, the person selected must have an education. Usually this is an education that deals with political science and psychology and other areas. Well, the Christian is also educated. He's to be educated in the message of Jesus Christ. The person selected to be an ambassador of a country must have work experience. Well, the Christian has work experience as well in ministering and sharing, doing things for other people, and presenting and speaking the message of Jesus Christ wherever and whenever he can. The person selected to be an ambassador of a country must have communication skills. Well, the Christian as well must be able to communicate the word of God and the message of Jesus Christ. The person selected to be an ambassador of a country must be able to take the initiative in things. Well, the Christian must learn to take the initiative as well, as he's serving people and doing things for people. And the opportunity comes up, he takes the initiative, not only to minister, but to share the message of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So note the similarities that apply to all church members as we look at this. The similarity in that great commission is given to each and every one of us uh, Christians, and it's our responsibility. Jesus said this in Matthew 28, 19. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You see, the application, uh, since we've become a new creature through Christ, we have been given a responsibility that each and every one of us is to, involve, to be involved in. In 2 Corinthians 5, 10, 17, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. And looking at some of the other versions of the Bible that I have, some of them say he is a new creature. New creature. And I kind of like that. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So basically, if anyone is in Christ, anyone referring to anyone who's become a Christian, he is a new creation. He's a new creature. Meaning he's a person no longer belonging to the world. Old things have passed away. His old life, his old history, of living is passed away. Behold, all things have become new. The person who becomes a new creature in Christ has a new life. He has new responsibilities. He has a new purpose in life. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18, the scripture says, Now all things were of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. See, the ministry given to us it is a ministry that has been given to us by God. It is the ministry of reconciliation. Why? Because that very same message that has reconciled us to God is the same message 
that will reconcile the world that's lost in sin. Who better to complete this ministry of reconciliation than those who have allowed the message of reconciliation to change our life from sin to salvation in Jesus Christ? You see, God has committed the ministry of reconciliation to us. And there's a lot of things that entail that concept and that thought of ministry. Ministry could include serving, could include, on our behalf, learning the message. It could also include helping others, caring for others, caring for our families, taking care of our jobs, setting the right example of Christ as his ambassador before each and every person. So the ministry of reconciliation is when, really, we're involved with people, we're involved with family, we're involved with caring, we're involved with, with uh, serving other people. And in that, we learn how to take the message of communication to those we serve, which brings us to our next point. You see, we're not only given by God the responsibility to complete the ministry of reconciliation, but we're also given by God the ministry to complete the word of reconciliation. 2 Corinthians 5.19 says, that is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. See, God has committed to us the word of reconciliation. So, we not only have the ministry of reconciliation, we have the word of reconciliation. We take that and we share that with people. And any time that we're serving people or helping people, we should take the opportunity and, and the advantage to do that. Matter of fact, there is an opportunity and advantage coming up, Lord willing, next Sunday, when the world will think about Jesus and his resurrection more possibly during the next Sunday than they will any other time during the year. Why? Because it's what the religious world and our, our culture and society call Easter Sunday, which we, they celebrate or are supposed to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You see, the ministry of reconciliation and the word of reconciliation is a good opportunity to not only serve people but to talk to people about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The thing is that in being ambassadors of Jesus, we have to understand that we're representatives of Jesus in action and interaction with people and in communication of the message of Jesus Christ with people. We cannot have one without the other. Although I've often heard some Christians say, well, you know, I, I can't speak about Jesus very well, but I do this for people, that for people, that for people. And it's true. Sometimes we're not very good people at orating the message of Jesus Christ, but we're not excused from that which God has given us. I have to share a story with you, and I've shared this story with you before. There was a man that was on the bus, and um, uh, a lady got on the bus that he recognized and that he knew, and, and uh, unfortunately the gentleman had not been going to church very, had stopped going to church, but he recognized this lady from when he used to attend church and everything. And as he watched her go and sit back at the bus in the public transit, he, he remembered about her. He remembered she was very shy. He remembered that she didn't uh, really wasn't able to talk with people and communicate and talk very long. So he's wondering, what in the world is she doing on the bus? Well, the bus went to several stops and she got off and he thought, well, I wonder why she's getting off here. I mean, this isn't even the part of town that she lived on. And she noticed that she crossed the street and got on the bus stop on the other side. He wondered, well, why is she doing that? That's odd. So as he progressed on his travel, he got up and acted like he was going to just simply choose another seat. And as he walked back to the back of the bus, he noticed that there was pamphlets left in those empty seats from where she, getting off the bus, put those pamphlets down in those empty seats. And he sat down and he opened one of those pamphlets. And in that pamphlet was the message of God's saving grace through the gospel of Jesus Christ. You see, she wasn't capable of literally sitting down and having a Bible study with someone. But she could put those pamphlets there, hoping that someone might find them. And she had the information on the back to contact the church if they were interested. Is that the ministry of reconciliation? Yes. Is that the ministry of the word of reconciliation? Yes. You see, the way we do these things isn't always dependent upon doing them the way we think or the way we see other people do them. You see, God wants us to understand we have the ministry 
of reconciliation, and we have the ministry of the word of reconciliation, but it leaves up to us the freedom to determine how to do that. God just wants us to know, as my children and my followers, this is what I want you to do. I want you to understand, minister to people. Minister to people to give them the example of the reconciliation you have. Minister to people in the way that, that you can to share the message of Jesus Christ. So, interaction with people and communication with people, the message of Jesus Christ is very important. You see, we're not only given by God to complete the ministry of reconciliation, but we're also given by God the responsibility to complete the word of reconciliation. As we read in 2 Corinthians 5.19, that is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. I gave you the example of this lady on the bus. Peter writes to his readers and expresses this ministry of uh, reconciliation and word of reconciliation to them and encourages them to do it this way, 1 Peter 3.15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for that hope that is in you with meekness and fear. And in 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verses 8 through 9. 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verses 8 through 9. The scripture says this. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. You see, we are given this ministry of reconciliation and this ministry of the word and reconciliation according to his purpose and grace. So why is that important? Well, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20 tells us, Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God has chosen in different ways to complete his will, using people, using his children, to reconcile people lost in sin. See, God worked through the prophets. He worked through Jesus. He worked through the apostles. And now God works through us. You see, only God can take us, if I may refer to us in this way, as weak and feeble creatures. Only God can take us as weak and feeble creatures and use us for his good and his perfect will. Remember what the scripture says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, it says, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. What is the good work that God has prepared us for? Well, according to the context of our lesson, God has prepared us for the work of the ministry of reconciliation and the work of the ministry in the word of reconciliation. Philippians 2.13 says, For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. What is the good pleasure, uh, the good work and the good pleasure of God? that we complete those things that he's given responsibility to, to us for, according to his will and his purpose. In Hebrews chapter 13, beginning with verse 20, the scripture says this. In Hebrews chapter 13, beginning with verse 20, the scripture says this. Now may the God of peace who brought you up, who brought up our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, Make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you what is well-pleasing in his sight. Through Jesus Christ, to him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Listen to what he says there. That God, the God of peace, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and because of the blood of the everlasting covenant that he shed, makes us complete in every good work to do his will, working in us what is well-pleasing in his sight. Maybe sometimes it's not that we can't do it. Maybe it's sometimes we just don't think of ways in which we can do it. Maybe sometimes it's not 
that we're incapable of doing it. Maybe sometimes we just don't realize that God provides ways for us to do it. You know, I, I think of Moses. When God said to him, I want you to go to Egypt and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. And he said, well, well, I can't talk very well. I can't do this very well. I'm not very good at this. And in each and every instant, in each and every excuse, if I may say it that way, that Moses gave, what did God say? Well, then take Aaron with you. He knows how to talk really well. Well, then don't trust yourself and depend upon yourself. I'm going to work my powers and wonders through you. Don't concern yourself with what Pharaoh might think. You concern yourself with what I want you to do. Paraphrasing those ideas and concepts. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 20 says, For which I am an ambassador in Christ, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. And remember, in that section of text in Ephesians, in that chapter, remember, Paul's talking about the, the importance of prayer and how he asks the church in Ephesus to pray for him, that when he goes out, he can share the message of the gospel. And he can share it completely. He can share it totally. He can share it holy and pleasing to God. Why? Because he's an ambassador in Christ. And he knows that he needs the strength and the courage to speak it boldly as he ought to speak it. You see, God does not want us to shirk our responsibilities as Christians. God wants us to embrace them. When we think and feel that it's someone else's responsibility, to fulfill the ministry of reconciliation or someone else's responsibility to fulfill the ministry of the word of reconciliation. You see, what happens is we allow ourselves the opportunity to allow the devil to influence us. And also, the devil influences us to be critical of what others are doing. Even if we're not doing anything, boy, that devil, he knows how to work on us and make us criticize those people who are attempting to do. That, that's just the devil's way. We need to do everything possible. Not allow the devil to influence us, but we need to do everything possible to allow God to influence us for his good and perfect will. You see, because the devil can influence us not only to be critical of others, but he can influence us to be lazy. He can influence us to become complacent. You see, it's all our responsibility to serve in the ministry of reconciliation and the word of reconciliation. And as we conclude, I want to leave you with these few practical words that Paul in Ephesians 4, where he talked about the reason why Jesus descended and ascended in the gifts that he's given each and every one of us to serve and to use in the church, to serve and to use in bringing the message of Jesus Christ to those who are lost. He says in Ephesians chapter 4 that we have these gifts and talents. He says, according to the effective working by which every part does it share? Causes growth of the body, but it edifying of itself in love. And that's in the second part of the verse of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 16. Do some of us have certain responsibilities that others of us don't? Yes. Yes. And we all have responsibilities that all of us have. We need to exercise those responsibilities to the church, to God's kingdom, for his will and his purpose. And think about it this way. What a privilege, brothers and sisters. What a privilege it is that God would say, okay, you're my child through the gospel, and guess what? I'm going to use you to minister to people, and I'm going to use you to talk to people about me. You know, God doesn't have to use us. God wanted to, he could just wash us like we think he needs to wash of us. But he doesn't. He sees in us what can be. He sees in us what will be. He sees in us as his children that we can minister and help him reconcile people. And we can minister in the word of reconciliation. And he gives us everything through Jesus Christ to be able to complete that live that, to fulfill that, all we need to do is simply just give ourselves to Christ for that gift. And we will. And what a privilege that God says, I'm going to use you. I'm going to use you for my will and for my purpose. Let's conclude with prayer. Father in heaven, we often look at your scriptures and we recognize
nice things that it says. And it's quite possible. I know when I was a young Christian, I, I looked at this uh, ministry of reconciliation and word of reconciliation and, and read it many times, but just passed over it, its thought and its concept. And it made me, one day I wondered, well, what does God mean by that? What God was telling me, and what the scripture tells, we should understand, tells all of us, it's not just certain people's responsibility to minister, uh, to do the ministry of reconciliation. It's not just certain people to do the ministry of the word of reconciliation. It's everybody's responsibility. I'm so grateful and thankful, dear God, that you've given us the privilege to participate and to work and serve for you in such a way because... I'll be the first to admit, dear Lord, you could have chosen a person a lot more qualified than me to do that. But you didn't call me, Father, for any other persons, any other reason. And I'm not talking excluding the message of Jesus Christ. You called me through the message of Jesus Christ to save me and wash away my sins. But also through that message of the gospel, you called me to qualify you. And I thank you and praise you so much for that and help us all to understand that, Father. May we be better at ministering the ministry of reconciliation. May we be better at taking the ministry of the word of reconciliation to others. And may we realize that you give us the freedoms in which way we can do that. And help us to brainstorm. Help us to think. Help us to realize the ways in which we can do that. And not that we have to do it like somebody else does. And we thank you for that freedom. to you again, Lord willing, on Wednesday uh, with our devotional, and we hope you have a great week, and God bless you.